Hi guys, um, so we're just going to start a new unit today over proportions and similar polygons. So we've been talking a lot about congruent polygons and shapes that are the exact same size, but now we're going to talk about shapes that are different sizes but are proportional to one another. For um, instance, you guys have been doing proportions uh, proportions since you were in like 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And they generally just look like um, fractions that are equal to each other. So like 2 fourths is the same thing as 4 eighths. They both reduce to 1 half. And if you cross multiplied, 4 times 4 is 16, 2 times 8 is 16. So when you are solving a proportion, remember that you cross multiply in order to solve for your variable. In this case, we're solving for y. Now we're going to do this example that is on the right hand side. So we're going to do 5 times 5 times all of this, y minus 1. Um, and it's equal to our other butterfly or our other uh, wing of our butterfly, 2 times 2y plus 3. So um, notice that I kept the parentheses around the y minus 1 and the 2y plus 3 is because we have to distribute our 5 times this whole thing. So we're going to do 5 times y is 5y, and 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And that is equal to 2 times 2y, which is 4y, and 2 times 3, which is 6. So from this point, you have a nice and easy proportion to solve, or I'm sorry, equation to solve, because you have a baby and a mama. So you just take the baby, subtract it, bring it to the mama. 5y minus 4y is y minus 5 equals 6. And then our last step in solving for y is just to add 5. So y equals 11. So again, you're cross-multiplying and you're distributing when the 2 is being multiplied by multiple things here and the 5 is being multiplied by um, multiple things here, distributing on both sides. Okay, let's move on. We're going to look at example number, uh, let's go ahead and look at example 3. Example 2 um, is a, a review problem. We've seen it before and we'll talk about this in class tomorrow. Example 3, the ratio of boys to girls is 3 to 4. Okay, so for every 3 boys, there are 4 girls. How many total students are in the class if there are 12 boys? Okay, so the problem is, is we're comparing total and boys, but we don't have a total over here. But we can find a total by adding the boys and girls together. So from our original ratio, three boys to four girls, we have a total of seven students. So now we can take this and use it in a proportion. We're comparing boys to total students. We want to know how many total students there are if there are 12 boys. So if you look back over here, boys and total students. So for every three boys, there's a total of seven students. Now we know that there are 12 boys, but it's asking us how many total students are there. So we're going to put an X in the denominator with the total. So this is a really easy proportion. After you've set it up, you simply, again, butterfly method, cross multiply. 3 times x is 3x, and 7 times 12 is 84. Then all you got to do is divide by 3 in order to solve, and you have your answer. 84 divided by 3 is 28 total students. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to some actual proportional shapes. So this is where the geometry kicks in. We've got two different examples, one on the left, which involves, um, looks like some hexagons that are similar. They aren't the same size, they are same, same shape. Okay, same thing, example five involves similar triangles. Same shape, different sizes. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and talk about this example right here with the triangles. Notice that, 
This triangle is sitting straight up. And this one's kind of rotated. So what I'm going to do is, in order to help me see it better, I want to redraw it. Okay, that's an ugly line. Sorry about that. <laughs> so if you were to rotate this, the top point would be T. Okay, and the right angle would go right here, which is R. And then Q would be then this corner. And it's telling me R to Q is 0 0.5. R to T is 1, and T to Q is 1.1. It also tells me that angle T is 27 degrees. So now I can look at my triangles and see that they are facing in the same direction. That helps me a lot. So we also have some missing angles here. For example, in this triangle, we have 90 degrees and 63 degrees. So in order to find angle M, you would just add 90 and 63 together and subtract from 180, because we know there's 183 degrees in a triangle and there are 27 degrees in angle M. So look at that right here. First triangle, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 27 degrees, 27 degrees, 63 degrees. So angle Q also has to be 63 degrees. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and write the congruent angles on here. We'll start with the right angles. Angle O is congruent to angle R, because they're both 90. Angle M is congruent to Angle T, because they're both congruent to 27 degrees. And angle N is congruent to angle Q, because they're both 63 degrees. Okay, so now what makes these triangles different is they have the same size angles, but look at their side lengths. They're different lengths. MO is 2, but TR is 1. Okay. So these are called corresponding sides. M to O corresponds with T to R. This one is bigger than this one. So we're going to write M, O, and T, R correspond. They're not the same lengths, but they're on the same side. Okay. O, N on the bottom corresponds with... RQ and MO, which is the hypotenuse, right? MN is hypotenuse, it corresponds with TQ, which is the hypotenuse in this triangle. Okay, so now that we have congruent angles, three of them, and corresponding sides, these, cor these sides are proportional. And what I mean by that is that they are similar to each other. Oops. Lost it there. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, Ran out of batteries there, had to start over. Um, so we're going to go ahead and write our similarity statement for these two triangles, MNO and TRQ. So what you do, it's the same thing as writing a congruency statement, but you're just writing similarity. So MNO, triangle MNO, is similar, since it's a similar statement, and the symbol for similar is this, just the squiggle line without the equal sign. So triangle MNO is similar to triangle TRQ. And make sure you're writing the letters in the same order. And that is it. Uh, your scale factor simply means to compare your right shape, the one on the right side, over your left shape. Some of you might know this as new over old. So the one on the right would be this shape over the one on the left. You can compare any one of the sides. So let's start with this one. Let's start with the height. One is the height of the one on the right, and two is the height on the left. Um, the hypotenuse on the right, 1.1 over 2.2 on the left. The base on the right, 0.5 over 1 on the left. All of these fractions, 1 over 2, 1.1 over 2.2, and 0.5 over 1, all of those 
um, reduced to two uh, one half in your calculator. So the scale factor of this shape is one half. So remember, scale factor is always right over left. Okay, let's check out this next page. We're going to do example six. Determine whether the given rectangles are similar. If so, write the similarity statement and find the scale factor. Okay, we determine if they're similar by comparing their sides. Remember, we want to compare right over left. So the shape on the right has a height of 4, and the shape on the left has a height of 6, which reduces to 2 thirds because they're both even. Now, we take the base of the shape on the right and compare that to the base on the shape of the left. 6 and 9. 6 ninths also reduces to 2 thirds. Since our ratios are both the same, then this is a similar figure. Okay, so we're going to write our similarity statement. Remember that you just have to write the um, the uh, letters in the same order. So if we start with G here, we would need to start with C on this on this uh, rectangle. So let's just start with A since that's that makes sense. So shape A, B, C, D is similar to A corresponds with E and we went around clockwise E, F, G, H. And we've already actually found the scale factor down here when we did right over left. So the scale factor is two thirds. Okay, we're going to skip over example seven because we're going to do that in class. And the last one I want us to look at is example eight. Find the coordinates of point A so that triangle ABCD is similar to triangle DEF. Okay, so this is triangle DEF. And if you notice, this triangle looks a little bit bigger than maybe what this triangle is going to be here. So we're missing A. Notice that A is the first letter listed here, and it's going to correspond with the first letter in the other triangle, D. So here's D, and um, we're missing A. So we know that A is going to be in here somewhere. We just need to find out where exactly it's going to be. So we're going to use slope, rise over run. So you're going to rise to run to to go from F to E and from C to B you're gonna rise one run one so what this is telling me is that our scale factor is going down by a half it's getting half as big going from this triangle to this triangle so if I went um, from E to D I would go over two and down four so we want to do half that in this triangle so instead of going over two we're gonna go over one and down two, and we have found our missing point, point A. You could also check it by doing the last two points from F to D, uh, going down two and right four. So we do half of that over here, down one and right two. So that would give us our point A. So, Find the coordinate of point A. Point A is located at 4, 1.